All right, folks, now here's what you're probably going to be dealing with. An old canoe, lots of dents, lots of scratches. This one leaks, uh, missing a few ribs. Um, as you can see, some of the prep work's been done already. I've already moved, removed the deck plates on both the bow and the stern. Um, I've removed the uh, sponsoons, uh, which are basically just floats that this model has on it. Um, some of the prep work's been done already, but it's still very, very rough. All right, when we look at this canoe, um, it's not very attractive, it doesn't look very good, and it doesn't float, most importantly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at ways that we can restore all the different parts of this canoe, make it look like it's newer, and hopefully sell it or use it for many more years to come. All right, this will be the last time that I actually show the canoe in its rough form. It'll start to take shape and be fixed up from here on. But there's the rough version of the canoe. Here's one of the exact same model. Exact same canoe. Both 14 footers, both sports pals. Exact same. So as you can see, the condition of this one is much, much better than the condition of this one. And we're going to look at how we can get there. All right, well, as part of the prep work that had to be done before um, working on this canoe, um, I had to remove the deck plates. And the deck plates are the parts that slip into the front and the back. Um, this just makes things so much easier later on. Um, the way I did that, just using a carbide tip um, on a drill, and I just bored out each of the old rivets, which we're going to replace after. Um, also, you'll notice that I already took the paint off of the uh, deck plate itself. Originally, it looked just like this with that birch bark, in my opinion, really ugly finish. And so, um, this makes it much easier later when we're going to be re-riveting to have this out right away. Um, so, that is always a good place to start. Alright, you know, you'll notice on this particular canoe that uh, the entire inside is coated with foam and the foam is, is pretty old. Uh, you also notice that we're missing a uh, rib right there. Um, also the aluminum ribs that go all the way along. If your canoe is similar, if it has ribbing uh, that can be removed like this particular model, what I suggest you do is you put a star and I'll just show you where I have it on this canoe. I put a star at the front. I don't know how well it's showing up there. There it is at the front of the canoe. And then what I do is I start by taking out each and every one of the ribs. Um, the reason for this again is to release the foam on the inside. Also each of those ribs should be shined up. They, they're pretty tarnished over, uh, over years of uh, use. And it is good practice to number each rib as you take them out. Um, I can't stress how important that is. Um, if you don't you're going to forget the order that you took them out in um, and that can result in a frustrating time when you're putting them back in. Alright, so I'm removing the ribs and on this particular model all you have to do is slide the rib out and there it goes. So that would be rib number two. Number one is still screwed in so I'm going to leave it for now. But what I said uh, before is make sure you don't mess up the order of these ribs. They have to go back in exactly the same uh, position and order that they originally went in as. Obviously the width of this rib <coughs> matches the profile of the boat. Another thing I noticed is <coughs> do not warp these or bend them out of shape. <coughs> they, you'll have a real hard time putting them back in if they get distorted in any way. Again what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep on going along the boat, removing rib at a time and I'm putting them in order on the ground again so that I don't mess up the original order of the ribs. And you keep going until you get all of them out. Uh, I think on this particular model there's 22 ribs. Um, and we're going to leave them out for a long time because uh, we're going to need to polish them up and make them look new again. Alright, so I've got all the ribs out now. Um, didn't take very long. A couple of them might be held in by screws. That was the case in this, in this case. And as you can see, each one is numbered. I'll just try to get that on camera. We'll see if we can. It's having a tough time, but each one has a number 
like I said, in the order that it was taken out. That's very important so that you can put them back in the exact same order you took them out. All right, <clears throat> now with all the ribs taken out, we can remove the inside liner. That's gonna let us see where the leak is in this particular canoe, we'll make sure we can seal it. And before we put the liner back on, we're gonna treat the liner um, and make it look like brand new again. Um, obviously, sealing the boat, making sure it floats and that it doesn't leak is top priority. Before you make it look any better, you wanna make sure that you have a waterproof vessel. Um, then you're going to be able to go on and uh, make it look nice. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the foam from the canoe. Uh, you want to make sure that you pull it evenly, that you don't rip it. Um, again, these liners can be very expensive. I know in this particular model, a new liner will cost upwards of over $100. We want to be able to use the foam again. Um, it's nicely shaped to the, the uh, canoe already. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to use the existing foam again. Um, and so, like I said, we're going to start by taking it out from the front. Pulling it very gently, you don't want to lose uh, to uh, rip it. And I'm pulling it out from under the gunnel first. And as you can see, that comes out nicely. Peeling it back. Again, not pulling too hard, we don't want to rip it. There's one side. Come over to the other side here. Same deal. ripping it all out. You can see that there's a lot of dirt under here, a lot of grime because it's still the original liner been in here for years. And there we go. Now we're generally going to just lift this out of here now that it's been removed uh, from all of the uh, edges. We're going to lift it up and take it out. Lots of dust, lots of and There we go. There's the inside liner. We want to put that somewhere safe for now and we're going to fix it up later. Okay, so now with the uh, inside liner removed, you can see that we went from a very ugly canoe to a much uglier canoe. <laughs> um, we are now down to the bare aluminum body. Um, no ribs, uh, we're looking at a very flimsy uh, vehicle and we're going to do two tests to uh, find out where the leaks are and then we're going to go ahead and seal the leaks uh, while we still can. Alright, now that we've got the uh, canoe uh, in my driveway here, we're going to do the first test for uh, leakage. Uh, some people will hold the canoes up to, uh, to a, a bright source like the sun and look for light coming in uh, to find their leaks. Personally, I think nothing shows you a leak better than water itself. So we have to spray down and clean the inside of the canoe anyways. We're going to keep on filling it and look for where the water is leaking. I'm purposely going to put the water on the rivets on the side and just looking for any water that might be leaking out of the vessel. now that we got some water in the uh, actual canoe itself. Um, I've got a solution here of just dish detergent and water um, and it removes most of the oils and dirt from the uh, metal pretty nicely. Uh, I'd say 90% of the metal um, dirt you can get uh, taken off with the dish detergent. Um, for the other 10% you might want to use a, uh, uh, a light sanding uh, pad or something similar just to get rid of that uh, grime if it's important to you. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go in here and remove some of this uh, uh, decay or uh, debris that's left in here that's still stuck to the metal. We're going to clean it up nicely. Then we're going to start looking for our uh, leaks. All right, so you can see now that we've got most of the uh, dirt and debris cleaned out. Uh, we're down to the bare aluminum. It has a primer coat on it. That's what you see there, the green oxidization. Um, Overall, not too many leaks in this particular vessel. We see the scratch along the bottom, which is fairly common with aluminum. Uh, they do scratch quite a bit. 
a lot more than uh, polyurethane however they are much lighter so that's a trade-off uh, but we did find one scratch slash fracture right here that uh, will cause us some problem that will definitely leak it is a small break in the aluminum and over time that will definitely leak on us we also noticed that some of the um, the joints some of the rivets here um, appear to be leaking very slowly and the way we check this is just to look at the underside of the boat and as you can see right there where that uh, joint is we got a little puddle under there also where the fracture was at the back we've got a puddle there too uh, it's very important to start with a dry surface where you can actually spot where the leaks are um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be moving the water to the other side just to make sure there's no leaks there um, I've already done that but just to double check to make sure we use two separate products for sealing these um, and again depending on the method you are most comfortable with you can use both or one of the methods uh, to fix your leaks all right as you can see um, what I'm using here is a boat dolly basically just two wheels you can get it from Cabela's what we've done is we uh, did the driveway water test and I'm fortunate enough to have a river that's very close by and I'm going to uh, take the uh, canoe over there and we're going to do an actual water test where we can see where there might be any leaks one thing I'm going to need for this is a sharpie marker so that I can mark where the leaks are in the boat um, basically I'm just going to put it in the water, push down on it, put a little bit of force and see where the water comes up okay so here's my helper, my daughter and uh, here is the canoe uh, on the uh, dolly we just pulled up here and as you can see just beside us here there's the river and the dock we're just gonna run it alongside the dock and we're gonna look for leaks from the top and we're gonna use the sharpie to indicate where those leaks are and we know where to seal alright whether it's repairing a weld or uh, epoxy or filling in <laughs> okay so we got the canoe in the water there's Jalen she's gonna go sit inside and we're gonna see if there's any leaks judging from it just sitting in the water right here along the shore if it does have any leaks they must be very minor because we're not seeing any water coming into the uh, watercraft at all all right well we're gonna get Jalen to sit in there put a little bit of pressure on the bottom and then we'll see what happens okay so Jalen is in the canoe she's putting a little bit of pressure on the bottom so that it's sinking into the water and I don't see any noticeable leaks. It's there was pretty comfy in here. there was that one at the back where we saw a crack in the aluminum, but obviously it's a pretty tight crack, so we'll just use some epoxy to seal it. Most of the joints don't seem to be leaking, so we're just going to run a coating of Super Seal on this to make sure that any of those minute just leaks that might be there guys, get sealed up. Just to tell you guys, if you're watching this video, it's very okay good alright so that's a good sign uh, if there was a major leak if we saw major water coming in or whatever um, we would have to go to either welding it or using something like uh, an epoxy aluminum or something along that those lines just to uh, fill it in uh, but this one looks pretty good that's a good sign alright so there's the uh, crack in the aluminum that we identified last time we're just gonna put a circle around it so we know where to seal that in um, again it is through but it's not leaking really quickly it's a very slow leak but we're gonna seal that up really good so we don't have any water coming in there anymore alright for this part of the uh, repair we're going to use a product called quick aluminum it's um, a two-part epoxy uh, which seals and binds to the aluminum uh, really really nice and tight uh, we're gonna use that on the crack that we had there if we had a bigger issue uh, then we'd have to look at either welding it or um, sealing with something a little more uh, substantial than this. But uh, it does a really good job for minor cracks and repairs. Uh, basically you just cut it, mix it, and um, put it wherever the crack is. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, so we have kneaded the uh, little ball of uh, epoxy here. And you notice that it becomes a uniform color. That means that the two parts have mixed properly. Now, I should be wearing gloves for this. Uh, for the sake of the demonstration, I'm not, but uh, I should be wearing gloves. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it onto the crack, press it down, and spread it out. Alright, spread it as nice and flat and 
even as I can. Again, you don't want to feel this after uh, when you're sitting on here. So you got to push it right into the crack as much as you can. Make sure it fills it up really good. All right. Let's do the same on the bottom so that it's a nice, nice seal on both sides. Oh, there it goes. All right, and then just spread it into place once you've got it going on. It will bind to the metal. It sticks really good. It's, it's very, very durable, very hard, and uh, works really excellent for sealing leaks. All right, now because this canoe has an inner foam, um, this will be, uh, you won't notice it because the foam, you sit on the foam rather than the actual bare metal. So, all right, and there we go. Okay, well, as you can see, the leak that was there has been epoxied nicely. Um, we did that to the top side, and if I go around to the underside, you'll see that a similar um, coating has been made. Now, the nice thing about this stuff is it's super, super strong. It, it creates a really, really solid bond on the metal. And uh, once it dries in about an hour, uh, you're able to sand it and make it nice and smooth and get it to fit the body as close as possible. Um, that was the only major leak. Now everything else will be sealed up with a different product that I'll show in a sec. Alright, for the next step of this uh, process we're going to be using Rust-Oleum Leak Seal which is an excellent product. It's a uh, basically a sprayable rubber um, that seals any leaks or uh, uh, water that might be coming into the uh, watercraft. I've used this uh, several times it's excellent when it dries it's just like a, a rubber coating and uh, you can spray it on evenly uh, it really really gets into the cracks it, it uh, fills the the uh, it seals up all the leaks it's a really really excellent product and that's what we're going to spray into all the welds and along the uh, the keel of the boat as well all right so uh, we got the leak seal set up and ready to go here and as you can see I'm just going to spray in nice even strokes along the welds first See how that seals up beautifully? Going to get all the welds. Nice even coat on the welds first. Those are the most important areas. That's where your boat is most likely to leak. Just getting a nice even coat. Okay, perfect. Those uh, welds are nicely sealed. Now I'm going to do the uh, keel of the boat, the, uh, the bottom, and I'm going to follow that weld and rivets that goes all along the bottom. looks really good. Okay so as you can see uh, this is the Rust-Oleum Leak Seal product that's been applied. Uh, this is the first coat. It's kind of a light coat uh, just to, to do the initial sealing. Uh, what I really like about this product is it sprays on as a liquid which means it's going to flow into wherever the cracks are. Uh, flow right into the seals and um, as it hardens it turns into a rubber uh, flexible, I think they call it a flexible polymer 
and it's a really excellent project, uh, product. Uh, you'll notice that in the front and in the back of the boat, in the bow and in the stern, I've paid extra attention there. I've sprayed extra because those are the areas that uh, tend to leak sometimes. Um, and again, the welds are very, very important. If I saw any minor um, cracks or uh, scratches that look like they're punctured through, I would also spray those. You notice that the epoxy is still there and I'm just waiting for it to finish curing. I'll probably sand it down a little bit and then spray a coat over that as well. Um, this just ensures that the boat is completely watertight, which obviously is most important when you're uh, dealing with a canoe or any sort of watercraft. And like I said, this product is very, very good. Um, it, uh, it seals up really nicely. Okay, so we're at the next stage of the uh, project here, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the paint from the top row of the uh, canoe. I think it uh, just adds a nice touch to the overall finish of the canoe. Um, and what I'm using here is just a heavy duty uh, furniture uh, body and paint varnish remover. I'm sure any um, uh, paint stripper is going to work. I'm making sure that I use a heavy duty one meant for metal uh, to make sure that it takes it off really well. <clears throat> um, what I did is I put it into just a little uh, uh, Ziploc type container here with a brush and I apply a very liberal coat along the part that I want to remove. And what's going to happen with metal when you do this after a few uh, maybe 20 seconds you're going to see that the paint's actually going to start to bubble and uh, it's pretty easy to take off after that. Alright, so that's all I'm going to do here is uh, just put some on a little little part here. And you want to do a little bit at a time because as this stuff evaporates, your paint is going to start to um, adhere to the metal again. Uh, so you want to do just a little piece or a little bit at a time and um, just keep going until you get all the parts that you want to remove off the, uh, get all the paint off. Okay, so here we can see what's happening with that uh, uh, stripper once it's been put onto the paint we can see it's starting to bubble up as you can tell right there uh, this is only after a few seconds of it uh, sitting on there and then what I do is I take either a uh, a putty knife like uh, this here or some steel wool and you'll see that I can just it's very easy to take off I can just scrape it right off and it comes right off with that uh, stripper on there uh, that's what I do for the first little bit. I get it, uh, get the main chunk of the paint off, and then I uh, use some steel wool to uh, smooth off the other areas. You have to do at least a couple coats just to get all the little spots of tough paint that might still be on there. Okay, so um, uh, here's the area that I'm working on, and uh, I just used a putty knife, as I showed in the previous video, just to scrape off the larger pieces of paint. And again, I'm just working on a really small part of this just to show you how the process is done. I don't recommend taking off more than you can kind of handle uh, because it will start to dry. Once I've done that, I got a piece of steel wool and I can rub off the excess paint really nicely. And as you can see, that's going to create a nice polished finish. Now, some of the paint is stubborn. It's not going to come off. You're going to have to do a second coat. Um, I don't think I've ever had to do this and just did it in one coat. It has to be in two coats. Now, if I had something like an orbital sander or something like that, it might make it a little bit easier. However, in this case, I have to be pretty precise because I only want the top row of the boat uh, to be bare aluminum. The rest I want to still have the paint on it. All right, so that's really important. Um, if you're doing a large area, then an orbital, orbital sander makes more sense. All right, but for small areas, you can't beat the precision of doing it by hand. All right, one important thing I forgot to mention here is when you get to areas that have a lot of detail, uh, like these ore locks, what I'm using is a brass uh, brush, and I can just rub into the uh, cracks and the crevices of the detailed piece of metal, and as you can see, that paint's going to come off pretty easily just by rubbing inside all those areas that are hard to get to with, uh, with steel wool or with, a, with another type of brush. 
So anyways, that's just a tip. These help a lot for these detailed portions of the, of the watercraft. All right, and through the magic of videography here, uh, you can see how it looks at the end. Nicely polished. Now there's some parts that I missed, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure that uh, I get them really well. But you can see all along the top part of this canoe, I want to keep the aluminum bare. And I just think that that's a really nice effect. So I've left that bare. It's very important that if you buy a canoe that is painted already, that you don't remove the paint. Um, if you're planning on changing the color of it, leave the paint on, sand it down a little bit just to roughen up the surface, but use that as a foundation for your next color. Um, otherwise you're going to have to re-etch the entire boat and it's really tough to get that paint uh, right back to the bare metal. Um, so that's just a tip if you uh, have a boat that's painted and you want to change the color of it don't remove the paint anyway so that's what that looks like nice bare aluminum now along the top looks really good that's gonna look really sharp once the boats finished okay one last thing here uh, before I get uh, any further into the project uh, I'm going to be shining up the ribs as well I'm just using steel wool and I'm rubbing them down so that they get nice and clean I don't know how well it'll show but there's half that's done and half that isn't. It's a noticeable difference. It's very noticeable. Um, again, these get really dirty because people are walking on them and sitting on them and all the rest of it. Uh, you want to shine them all up really nicely. All right, what we're doing here just to prep the foam to put it back into the canoe is we are spraying it down just with the garden hose, getting rid of all the dust and dirt that's on it. This should really improve its uh, appearance right off the bat. It is really, really dirty. I've also got the pontoon pieces, I'm going to spray those down as well and make sure there's no gunk on those. Um, over the years a lot of dirt is going to collect and the foam seems to collect uh, a lot of it. So uh, i got to get it really nice and clean uh, before we even think about putting it back into the canoe. So this is pretty important. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm just reinserting the liner, as you can see, and I'm putting back the ribs. Now the ribs can be really tricky to get in, um, especially if uh, the liner's been out for a while. So what I got is a mallet and a wooden block, and I'm just banging them into place. Remember, I had them numbered from before, so it's easy to figure out. Uh, one other little thing is that I've got screws through each of the holes where the sponsoons were so that I know that my liner lines up exactly where it was before. Okay, uh, what we're doing now is we're putting in the deck plate. This is the back deck plate, the uh, stern. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fit it inside this space uh, where I had removed the rivets before. These are deck plates from a different canoe. Uh, they're in better condition than the original one, so I'm replacing those. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it in under here, kind of at a bit of an angle, so that it fits back in. All right. Pull it up pretty tightly here, and it should pop into place. And there we go, now that is in position. However, I am gonna have to uh, re-drill the holes because it, again, it's from a different canoe. Um, in order for this one to fit in here, then I'm gonna re-rivet, and uh, that should be a permanent uh, solution right there. Okay, so uh, what we're doing is we're just going along the old holes, as you can see here, and I'm just putting my drill bit down there. through the uh, deck plate all along so that these new holes are going to line up with the old holes. All right, uh, we're going to go all the way along and then we're going to use pop rivets uh, just because they're easy and uh, they work really well. Uh, we're going to drill all these holes and then pop rivet that deck plate in. Okay, we are now ready to do the rivets and as you can see I've started already. Um, so on each of these holes I've drilled down through the, sh the uh, metal all right, on the deck plate so that now all the new holes line up with the old deck plate. I'm using 3 16 5mm rivets, pretty big rivets. 
and I'm just using a standard manual riveter okay and if you haven't used one of these before the way that they work is quite simple all right you're gonna take your rivet there it is right there you're gonna take your rivet gun uh, rivet your riveter excuse me and you're just going to push this pointy end into the holes at the end of the riveter just like this all right so now it's ready to go we're going to put the rivet the fat part in through the hole and you can see that it lines up nicely and now all we do is we compress the handle and that's going to suck that little ball bearing up on the other end through the shaft of the rivet and it's coming up I can feel it and once it gets really tight I can feel it's tight already it's gonna pop there it is once it pops you know that that rivet is solid and this metal is not going anywhere I can push down on this as hard as I want that's not going anywhere um, I like pop rivets because they're easy and they, they hold really really well okay so I'm gonna keep on going all the way around and I'll show you the uh, job at the end all right there's the uh, rivet job on the the back deck plate didn't take very long at all um, I will admit that it looks a little ugly with all these rivets along here but I was following the riveting that was done originally it looks like somebody just went to town there with the rivet gun but again I wanted to fill all the holes to make sure that there was no open holes which uh, probably looks even worse but anyways um, super super solid I could put all my weight on that that's not going anywhere uh, really strong and uh, like I said not going anywhere it's it's a good uh, rivet job all right uh, using the exact same process as in the uh, earlier video I just did the bow um, deck plate as well you can see a few dents in there I'll, I'll polish those out after um, I also did the nylon caps at the end and they're just held on by a rivet on both sides and that really finishes off the uh, the front and the back really nicely there's the back that we had done uh, not too long earlier alright so uh, it's starting to come along now we're going to move on to uh, painting that'll be the next step uh, we got some prep work to do on the body um, but it's coming along nicely it's almost done and it'll look really great at the end okay one part on the canoe that we really want to make sure we get rid of all the paint is the keel of the boat um, in this case on the bottom of the canoe uh, we see that it's a painted keel the reason I like to take the paint off of the keel is this is the part that's going to drag on the ground anyways it's going to get rubbed the most uh, a paint job on this is most likely to wear off anyways um, that way if I clean it up get a really nice uh, right down to the bare aluminum um, I don't have to worry if I drag it along grass or along sand or whatever um, the keel will stay bare so it doesn't matter anyways same process that we've used uh, for the other parts of the uh, watercraft we got the uh, heavy duty heavy body paint and varnish remover I'm gonna apply that with a paintbrush and let that sit for a couple minutes and then um, use either a scrubbing pad followed by some uh, steel wool to uh, remove that paint off of there all right pretty brainless easy to do and uh, in the end it's going to be bare metal it's going to look really good and like I said I don't have to worry about it when I drag it along a shoreline or uh, or, or wherever uh, I don't have to worry about the paint coming off so and here we are with the magic of video uh, literally a minute later all the paint is off uh, actually I had the side already done I just flipped the canoe upside down so you can see how this is gonna look uh, this is what it should look like once it's nice and clean you've gotten rid of all the paint all the residue and uh, now that's like I said nice it's bare and uh, at the end when you have the rest of the body painted it actually looks pretty nice to leave this um, shiny and uh, you know bare aluminum
All right, now that we've got the uh, rivets in and uh, it's looking really good with the end caps as well, um, I've done a little bit of the prep work here and uh, washed down the canoe really well with uh, a mild detergent and uh, soap with water and uh, a light sanding brush uh, pad just to get rid of any dirt or grime that was on the boat itself. Uh, now before we prime the boat, um, you can also see I've uh, masked off all the areas that I don't want the paint to go onto. Uh, but we have these big decals that look really ugly. They're, uh, they're old, they're scratched up, they're beat up, and we got to remove those. Um, this is a tricky process. If you've got old decals, you've got old um, uh, vinyls or, or any sort of decal on uh, an old boat, these can be tricky to get off. Uh, the easiest way that I've found to get rid of them is to um, take a blow dryer, all right? You want to warm up the part that you're working on, get it really, really hot or warm to loosen the adhesive. And then I use a product called uh, Goo Gone, uh, which is a citrus-based um, adhesive loosener. And between the two of those, I find that I can remove the... Um, any decal um, off of uh, metal pretty easily. I also use a putty knife just to scrape off the, uh, the decal as I'm going along. Um, this is really important because I don't want to paint over that. Um, the paint's not going to attach or not going to adhere to the plastic, so uh, this has to go. All right, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just heating up the area really, really hot with the uh, blow dryer, and I've soaked the sticker with Goo Gone. And you can see how easy it is with a putty knife. Once it's hot, I can literally just push the sticker back pretty easily and off she comes. And it gives off a really nasty smell. Uh, I think it's the uh, probably the glues that, uh, or the adhesive that is uh, heating up. But you can see even with my hand here, I can pull this sticker right off. As long as I keep it really hot, uh, it's not that difficult to take it off. Um, again, that Goo Gone is really excellent. It loosens it up. I soak the entire sticker first with that. Then with the blow dryer, I'm able to, uh, to peel it off the rest of the way. The, the secret here is to go really slow, not to try to rush it, um, because otherwise uh, you'll tear the sticker and it makes it a lot harder to get it off after. So uh, pretty easy. Okay, here we are about uh, 10 minutes later and we can see that most of the decal is off. Uh, a little bit of the adhesive is left over. So this is where I put that Goo Gone on there really good and uh, rub off the rest of the adhesive. Um, once that's off, nice and clean, uh, then this side of the boat, this, this part of the boat will be ready for priming and then we can start painting and the job is almost complete. All right, there's the final results with the adhesive all removed now, nice and clean, uh, ready for primer. Okay, well, I'm ready to prime the canoe, and uh, what I'm using here is Rust-Oleum's uh, gray paint primer, uh, two times coverage. It works really excellent, uh, provides a really nice, uh, thick coat of primer. Uh, because the canoe is already painted, I don't have to worry about a self-etching primer or uh, anything that you normally deal with with aluminum. If you had a bare boat, a bare watercraft, you want to find a nice self-etching primer that's meant for aluminum. Again, I don't have that problem. So this stuff uh, works really, really well because like I said, there's already a foundation coat for it to stick to. Um, it just, it covers up beautifully. All right, so uh, the secret to spraying this stuff is to make sure that you go a nice, even, passes. You don't want to clump up in one spot and get drips. Uh, you want to go very, very nice and evenly. And make sure you got a lot of ventilation in the room. You don't want to pass out from the fumes. It is pretty toxic stuff. Alright, uh, very shortly after, there you can see the primer coat is on. 
So you can see the old versus the new. Huge, huge, huge improvement, obviously. Um, and we're just getting ready to do the second side. Okay, as you can see behind me, uh, I've got the uh, canoe all uh, primed up. And now I'm going to move on to the Rust-Oleum uh, Ultra Cover. This is Hunter Green. It's a semi-gloss. Uh, it's ideal for outdoors, metal, wood, whatever. Um, when you're doing uh, primer and paint, I recommend that you match the brand of primer to the paint. That way you know that they're going to work well together. Um, this stuff is really, really strong. Um, I've used it before on a couple other things. and It's, it's actually when it dries and, and it's, uh, it cures. It is very tough to scratch and, and it does a really good job. So same as the uh, primer, we're just going to put even coats. I'll probably end up doing two, uh, two full coats of this stuff and uh, we'll take it from there. Alright, as we can see here, the uh, canoe is all not painted up now, and it looks really good. Okay, all uniform, and uh, I'm going to wait for it to dry before I take off my masking tape. Um, but it does look really good, nice and uniform in color. And like I said, that paint will dry really solid and hard, and uh, should be no problem once it's, uh, once it's dry. Okay, the paint is dry and I've taken off all the masking tape and you can see how great that boat looks just like brand new. Obviously I'm going to have to go and clean up some of the parts where the paint kind of dripped and spread but overall it is very very good. Looks really excellent. A couple more uh, cosmetic touches and then the boat is ready to go. Alright, well you remember uh, not too far back in the videos um, I had scraped off the old decals um, on the boat. Um, obviously they were old and they were scratched, but it would be nice now with the new uh, paint job to replace them. Um, you can buy the decals from uh, the manufacturer. If the manufacturer is, uh, let's say out of business, if it's an old canoe or whatever, um, you can get them custom made if you want to spend the money. Um, I have a vinyl cutter at my work, so I'm fortunate that way. Um, and I've got the Sportspel uh, decal made up here. So for this particular decal, uh, like most vinyl decals, I'm going to peel off the top protective layer that keeps it safe from any dust or debris before you use it. Okay. I'm just going to peel off the graphic entirely. And I went with yellow because I thought, you know, green boat, yellow, they kind of go good together. I don't know. And once we've got that peeled off, I'm going to apply it um, as evenly as I can to the um, stern of the boat on the, in this uh, particular model. So. I'm going to just make sure that's nice and even where I want it. Alright, another thing i got to think about is that the spawn soons are going to come in here and I don't want to cover those up. I'm just going to apply this nice and evenly across, as you can see here, making sure that there's no air bubbles. Alright, air bubbles are going to make it look really bad um, so I'm just gonna make sure that's on there really good 
It helps to have a putty knife just to press out all the air bubbles, make sure uh, they're out completely. But this one looks like it's on there pretty good. Rub it down really good. And then all I do is uh, peel off the protective uh, covering here. Again, make sure your paint is dry. You don't want to be peeling it off and, and also be peeling off the paint as well. Oops. All right, and there we go. You can see how, uh, how that looks. Makes it look really professional and finished off nicely. Um, to me, I think uh, personally it just adds a nice, uh, nice finish to it and uh, really adds a lot to the, uh, the look of the boat.